Raquel, we are here starting episode 9, officially for the first time. Always starting everything for the first time. How are you doing? I, I'm good. I'm, yeah. That was the most artificial how are you doing I could ever produce, and it was great. But I am happy that you're here. It's been too long. It's yeah. been nine episodes of me trying to get you in here, and I was being too busy to make it happen. But we are finally here. And yeah, it's been a big year for both of us, and I guess we're, I guess, into the new year at this point. Yeah. But it's fun to look back, like, I feel like we kind of started together, and we've taken, yeah, we were, like, together on our journeys for the same, for a while, and at some point, we both kind of, like, pursued interests differently, and I think I it's cool. I would say it's the same, but not really. I feel like I've just gotten, into, like, more into the video side of things, and you've enjoyed the photo side of stuff, and that, yeah, like, true. has come with some more differences, but one of the differences is that you've been touring a lot more than I have, and you've been traveling a lot more, and in the last six months, eight months ago or so... You were on the road with a bunch of bands. It was yeah. a big tour. So where'd you go? Who are you touring with? <laughs> okay, so I hopped on a little bit late. Um, I was with Victims. Shout out Victims. <laughs> Denton, Texas. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's where I got. I don't want to know what happened in Denton, Texas. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I kind of do. Why is Denton, Texas significant? Or is that a, is that a story for later? Uh, I... So honestly, it's a it's a tour talk. So sometimes on tour, you know, everyone's having a good time. It happens. I got forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I totally forgot about this. I was on the phone and I was like, "Oh my god, they're driving away." <laughs> and for whatever reason, it it happened. It happened. You know, it wasn't like a super long situation or anything like that. But um, yeah. I don't know. There's, it's hard to keep track of so many people inside of a van, especially if you're touring in a van uh, and you're just used to people like climbing in and being in their bunks or sleeping a lot usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were times where if certain people weren't there, you wouldn't have known that they left the van. Especially when it's day one and like they're not quite used to having you on board yet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, I mean, it happens. It was a good time though. It, it does. Yeah. So how long were you stranded for? In total, probably like like eight minutes. Okay. Yeah, I it, wasn't, it was hours. I wish the way you tell stories, it sounds that like would have it was been hours, a great but. like to write home about situation. Now it would have been great. <laughs> it been great. I, uh, I heard how there's like two types of happiness. There's things you enjoy right now. And there's things you can only enjoy looking back, and that's one that you can only enjoy looking back. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I definitely set a tone when I came back in the van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made your presence felt for sure, so they couldn't forget you anymore, as you do, <laughs> establishing yourself, asserting yourself. Yeah. Um, so you went from Denton, Texas, and then how long were you okay, on the so, road? So that was a different tour, but the most okay. the most recent tour that I did was with, um, I toured with, I was doing content for Victims, mm -hmm. and it was with uh, Slay Squad was on the first half, then Jinx, and then it was Hunt the Dinosaur, and Vale Amaya and Born of Osiris. Mm -hmm. And I would say some of the most notable shows. Um, North Carolina, I think we played Greensboro. That was a really, really good one. And it's not like outside of the fact that the crowd was amazing. Like mm -hmm. it they showed out. Um, but there was also like a Wawa up the street or yeah, yeah, seats. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of like a little bit of a dream having that there. We did great in merch. Um, it was a really, really good show. And then Born of Osiris, I came on for the Chicago date. So I got to see them do their hometown show. And that was really sick. And obviously Victim's hometown. So that was cool. Um, I think when you talk about the good show, it's funny that you mentioned the Wawa up the street. Uh, and it's not the, like, <laughs> I think it's just when you're on the road, the perspective of things gets so skewed where like a good show is having a good crowd and is selling a lot of merch but it's also the little things of like is there a good restaurant nearby because sometimes right. you're just in the middle of nowhere and it's weird how those little things that yeah normally that's not a problem like you would never define a I went on vacation and it was a good vacation because I had a wobble off the road. But when you're on tour and you're in that venue and that reality yeah. for that long, that is a really significant thing. That short walk made all of the distance. Like I remember when we played Gramercy, um, we all kind of like did our own thing that day and I wanted a salad 
for whatever reason mm-hmm. and to go get a salad like yeah it's new york there's probably a hundred thousand salad spots you know in a very close vicinity but for whatever reason the place that i wanted was so inconvenient to get to by uber or by anything else so i just walk there and then there were other venues where you would go there um i don't even remember the place that we played it it was a really strange day. There was a cat there. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the things that stand out. Yeah. Yeah, there was absolutely like it was almost like driving uh that movie Wrong Turn, where there's just like a bunch of like broke down cars and you're just like we were driving there and we're like, I don't know, man, this is a little sketchy. There was mm-hmm. no food around. Mm-hmm. It was so shot. Like, I mean, the show was great, but the area and the location was just like there was it was desolate. Mm -hmm. So we had to wait until the end of the show to eat. And it was terrible. Oh, my God. I think that's the reality of tours. We always think about you're going to New York City. You're going to the Big Apple. And it's like, no, sometimes you're not in the part of New York City that everyone else gets so excited to go to. Uh, And that is, yeah, oftentimes a reality, especially of up and coming bands or especially our whole scene is basically up and coming in the context of music. Of Like, we're not. As a, as a scene generally like an arena thing it's much more underground and local or smaller yeah. stuff um i guess in our context there's probably someone else who would disagree with that but i don't really care what they think so that's, that's also fair. good <laughs> <laughs> that's also a good thing to be aware of you editing um, that like <laughs> yeah no i i'm determined to leave stuff in which is getting harder every time as i get more comfortable and open up a little more uh eventually something something will get cut out but for the moment we're on i think 100 percent streak there might okay. have been one little thing that got cut out but all right otherwise we're doing pretty good but so what else stands about the tour so the, there are these couple shows that were good uh, uh, but what's life in the van like are you sleeping in the van most nights are you so staying in motels hotels i have an incredible chemistry with uh victims mm-hmm. specifically meredith me and her are really really close um and We are the flip cup champions. (laughs) We'll set up a table anywhere. (laughs) So for me, touring, um, it was a pretty interesting balance between like, I guess, partying, doing merch, taking photos Mm -hmm. and, you know, getting that done in a turnaround time frame where they were able to post in enough time. One of the biggest issues that I had was Wi-Fi and uh, charging your MacBook, um, mm-hmm. MacBook users, you know, the airport sounds that you're. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, did you have outlets in the van? Did they have like a converter thingy? They did. Um, like it was <laughs> fine, but it's, it's just like. Never enough. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's never enough, especially like I felt like I was overshooting Mm -hmm. most nights just because i i love taking pictures of victims i don't know we have a great time on stage it's really hard to just be like okay well i feel like i got all the shots that i needed tonight i feel confident walking away from this it's like no way i actually love this song yeah there's also always that what if (laughs) i was like the the what if you never know like when the moment's gonna happen, so to speak. And like yeah. even in the photo, like you know when the big moments of the song is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And even when that's like you could catch some smile in the background that exactly. adds to it. There could be the drummer's wrist looks broken in the first one, so you end up needing the second one that you didn't think you were gonna need. Like there's always, yeah, that value of like it, it is hard to like feel like you've done everything and it's like, no, yes. I gotta go back and do it because I don't actually know if I did everything and in the context of a live photo, like you don't you have twenty minutes to do all the work you're gonna do. Like you don't have time to check everything and see how everything went and yeah. figure out if everything was perfect. Like you just got to make a call sometimes and <laughs> keep going. My biggest mm-hmm. thing is faces. Mm-hmm. Like I try to make sure that their faces, if I wouldn't want it on the internet. Yeah, that's important. I'm not editing it and sending it to you. Yep. Like if I wouldn't want my face to look that look like that. And a lot of time musicians can't even control it. So they're yeah. kind of just like... Yeah, the drum face. You know, and... (laughs) I'll blur that so no one can screenshot, no worries. Right. I I wouldn't want to have just like, you know, 35 pictures of somebody looking like they're they're in excruciating pain from eating Taco Bell catering or something, you know. There's also a really fine line between like the intense photo and like the uncomfortable (laughs) facial expression, which is a really hard thing in our scene. Like when I've shot people who like stand by, like I've shot like country acts. Mm-hmm. And it's so simple. Like, the mic stand poses them nicely. They have their guitar. They're always singing. Like, it's a really, like, beautiful yeah. and easy thing. And, of course, we're in 
the equivalent of basements playing shows and sometimes obviously it's venues yeah. and sound systems but like they're often not glamorous places they're pretty simple they're pretty modest and the people are very active like it's not a, a static thing you're shooting um and there is that that random chance i think is so interesting there <laughs> It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely something if you're, I would say if you're repetitively shooting the same band multiple times, like for a great example, mm -hmm. A Day to Remember, for a while they had uh, like a, a show set up where you knew that Jeremy was going to come out on a hamster ball, they were going to have t-shirt cannons, like mm -hmm. in that era of shooting A Day to Remember, you would probably be able to know when they were going to do what. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, when you're shooting someone redundantly, you are used to when they're going to do something, especially if you listen to them. Um, you can get a gist of, like, when a, an important part of a song is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But, for example, like, uh, I just did the Brand of Sacrifice. I've never shot them before. Mm -hmm. um, they, like, it was interesting shooting a newer band that I've never worked with before while well, shot. Yeah, we got to cut that out. I don't want to say I worked with them. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, interesting to take pictures of them and not have any idea of how they work on stage. Like, yeah, I could have researched it, but that's also, you know, I'm not going to research that's it. That's hard, yeah. I, yeah, I just... shoot more bands than you can Yeah, yeah. I, I, I shot the show and everything, and it was really interesting. Um, it had been a long time since I shot essentially and that venue and whatever i'm rambling we gotta cut all this out i don't no, know we don't it's all great i'm curious i don't know what the point i'm making is but essentially it was a it was a huge difference like uh, between shooting bands that i'm regularly working with and then adding someone new into mm -hmm. the mix um and not knowing like okay so kyle's gonna you know do yeah Whoa. it is tough. and and hit a certain point so it's almost like challenging yourself every time you shoot a new band that you're not touring with or that you're not like persistently working with mm -hmm. it is always tough yeah. i think uh i run into that uh one thing i want to go back to you're talking about how you kind of get a prediction of the set and i think definitely as you shoot more sets you start to get a, a vibe of like what's going to happen and you start to pick up on you know the vocalist things yes. and when they're taking a deep breath it's like okay so the next thing coming out of their mouth is going to be a big thing whatever yeah. they're cutting out or yeah you start to feel the build up and you go okay i should be aware of this and get the wide shot or whatever there are times where i swear i can like feel the ground shake more and you can, like, feel the pit open up behind you and you're shooting a hardcore show. Yes. And it's this weird, like, Spider-Man Sixth Sense that I've never talked about publicly. And I'm curious now, like, do you – I swear there are times where you're shooting and, like, the issue here is that you're in the front row. There's no photo pit and there's a pit behind you. Mm -hmm. So if that thing opens up and people start swinging fists and kicks and body parts, like, you're in trouble. And I swear there are times where, like, you feel the ground literally shake under your feet and go, okay, I need to move. Is that a thing? So I will say – um, I got spoiled on yeah. the Born of Osiris tour a lot of times. It Born of Osiris fail. But a lot of times it was barricade. Mm -hmm. But the tour before that that I did with victims, I did with Born Anew, and there was no barricade. Um, and after I would say maybe like a week, I had learned, you know, everyone's breakdown, yeah. when they would call for certain things and stuff like that. And I knew at certain points, like, you can feel it. It's like a weird, mm -hmm. like, all right, time to look behind. It is, yeah. <laughs> like, this is going to happen. Yeah. I may or may not get hit. It's worth it for the shot. We're going in. Yeah. Sometimes it is worth it. And that's a yeah. call you got to make. Of, Especially the dog piles. Yes, especially in the hardcore shows. Yeah. I bet some of the victim songs <laughs> have some people moving. Yeah, people people will absolutely mosh for them. And that's another thing is like seeing people get beat up kind of. Mm -hmm. It's like a <laughs> – I don't know. It's interesting to see because yeah. I understand it's mosh culture and if people are in there, they're, they're willing to accept whatever happens to them. But sometimes I'm like mm -hmm. all you can do is just – <laughs> Sheesh. Um, I want to go back. You mentioned the challenge of like delivering stuff and the challenge of having enough electricity and time to edit stuff and the mental energy to get stuff edited. When do you end up squeezing that in? Like, so what is a normal turnaround time on tour? And yeah, how where do you make that time? 
Um, most of the bands that I have toured with have a specific set time that they like to post on social media. Okay. Uh, depending on how the night goes for victims, I was also doing merch. So my night ended pretty much when the show ended. I know some people would edit at the merch table, but, uh, if, if a band is listening right now, what time should they post on social media to your best guess? To my best guess? To your best guess. The in, best in time, time right now. You're on the spot. Okay, so my my thing is a lot of the bands like to post around noon okay. to say like, hey, come out to the show, you know, to people who might not have mm-hmm. knew that it was in their area or whatever. Personally, I try to think of what times I'm on my phone. Okay. Uh, I work a regular job. I And I'm like, hmm, okay. I would either say early in the morning or later at night. Because between those times of day, like noon, yeah, people are on lunch break and stuff. But I'm probably driving to get food on my lunch break. (laughs) Yeah. Like realistically. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not on Instagram. You're like in a hurry. Like it's not a time to like pause and consume something. Yes. I mean, some people might have a cafeteria. Good for them. But I don't personally. (laughs) Um, So I, I either like early in the morning or later at night. Uh, and my recommendation to bands is always to start randomly responding to comments um, throughout the day because it puts your stuff back in the feed when you're commenting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's... So if you're staying engaged all day, even if you respond to one comment an hour. If you've got five comments in the first hour, you're saying respond to one comment in the first hour, another comment in the second hour. Okay, third, yeah, it hour, works to great for... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, personally for me, that works better on Twitter. Um, Instagram's algorithm is an ever-changing whatever. Yeah. I don't even care. Yeah, it's, it's an annoying conversation. Yeah, it seems outdated. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a game you can't win. Like, we're never going to know the rules of the game, so how are you going <laughs> to win the game? Like, it's, I don't know. It seems like everyone has their own recipe and their own uh, science of how it should work. So it's interesting to hear your take on it. Um, yeah. But the first question was, yeah, delivering and editing. So when are you making time for this and what is a normal uh, turnaround time? So I believe uh, victims, they would post around like noon time. So I would, I normally get up really early, obnoxiously early. So it ended up working out. But the only issue was getting the photos uploaded to Dropbox mm-hmm. while we would be driving in the absolute middle of nowhere. Like, yeah. I'm talking next gas station, 50 miles, like get gas now type deal. Um, As someone from the Northeast, that's so alarming. Yeah. I never realized how spoiled we are to have things so close together. Yeah, it's awful. And then, yeah, as soon as you leave this this neck of the woods, so to speak, (laughs) you're all of a sudden in in the wilderness, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I really like the availability that we have to be close to like Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Mass, New York, like mm-hmm. Connecticut. It's all so close versus yeah. like people elsewhere who they're like, yeah, I'm traveling nine hours to go shoot a show in Dallas. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's the next closest city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's absurd. Yeah. We're, we're very lucky for that um, um i keep asking you about delivering and editing, yes, yes, and then sorry. i keep interrupting you don't apologize it's no, literally no, no. my fault <laughs> but i enjoy the i enjoy the tangents uh so yeah i would try to get it to them around noon the issue a lot of times was wi-fi but they they did fine with posting um i would say the biggest thing that i would change on my next tour uh is to just get it done that night regardless of how exhausted i am um, How much are you normally delivering? Oof. This is a hot seat. So actually, let me look. Let me look. I'm going to look. You know, give me an estimate. Are you, is that you're okay. sending them five photos or are you sending them 100 photos? No, definitely not five. I would say I would be delivering varying, honestly, mm-hmm. per night. It could be 40 to 90. Okay. Like I, That's a ton. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like, I was shooting with two cameras. Which makes things more complicated yeah it, yeah it, like it complicates it but at the same time where i feel like i miss the things that sony has i have my canon mm-hmm. so it was like whatever i mi- i felt like i was missing from my can my sony i would have my canon and vice versa so it's an interesting setup you got going on there yeah. yes it was working out really well for me uh, it seems to be working great for you. <laughs> yeah I, I don't yeah i I think normally people would tell you to centralize your brands, and you're like, "No, I'm going to get the both the best out of both both systems." Yeah, and that's a really smart way to do it. Yeah, I think that's 
kind of bold and like I don't know, just kind of violates what people will tell you to do. But it's like, who cares? Yeah, I can I can have Nike and Adidas on. Watch me. Um, I feel like you would throw hands over that. Yeah. That's a different <laughs> Maybe a bad example, but I did try. Um, <laughs> so normally 40 to 90 photos, and you're normally sending that the next day by noon. So show ends at 8 p.m., and by noon the next day, you have a good chunk of photos sent over and ready to go. Yeah, so... When do you sleep? <laughs> So I can't 100% confirm that they were there by 12 every day. There were some days where I would have to individually airdrop pictures in the van mm-hmm. because I just couldn't upload them to Dropbox. Um, but my time to sleep. I, myself personally, I don't drink coffee. I don't normally do energy drinks. Um, but for whatever reason, I could go to bed at like 3 o'clock in the morning and I would be up at like seven. Uh, We're not wired the same. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know, but <laughs> I would. I just get up yeah. really early. Uh, my normal thing in the morning was if we were outside of a Planet Fitness, I would just try to go in there ASAP. Mm-hmm. Or on the lucky chance we were somewhere with a store, I would get up and I would go like van shopping. Of course. <laughs> I was talking on one of the last episodes at some point about how great it is to wake up in a Walmart parking lot. Yeah. Uh, and then my mom, who listens to everything, shout out mom. I know she's going <laughs> to know you at some point. Um, but she was so shocked at like, Walmart. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting. Like, it's such an obvious glamour to us. But yeah. it's so unimaginably like glamorous to someone who's not in the world. Uh, that was an interesting perspective to, to compare. Uh, so you were often sleeping in. Walmart parking lots or Planet Fitness, and Planet mm-hmm. Fitness is obviously for the showers and sometimes yeah. a gym if you have the energy to get up and do it, but mostly a shower and just a safe place to be. Yeah. There were some mornings where I woke up late, but majority mm-hmm. of the time I would be up very early and the biggest indicator everyone knew I was awake was my nails. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nails yeah. on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's happened. It gives you away every time. Everyone would wake up and I'd be like, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the, the rooster <laughs> every morning. <laughs> just waking everyone up. Whatever. It was a good time. They they enjoyed it. They miss it, I'm sure. I'm sure they do. They, they should <laughs> if they don't. Um, what else was challenging on the road? So it's tough to find time to edit, tough to sleep sometimes, tough um, to yeah, find time to get things done. Okay, so I will say there comes a point in time where, uh, you know, if you're not making enough time to spend time with yourself, everything's going to annoy you. Mm -hmm. There are some days where some people are having a bad day and, like, uh, it's it's just a lot of attitudes kind of in one. You're with each other all these days. And, um, like, nothing particularly bad happened at all, but there were – a lot of people that had things going on at home that were like completely outside of their control. So, um, like, you know, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but like some people would have more like somber, Mm, like bad days and it's natural. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Oh man, like I love this person. We're having a great time. Like, I don't know if I should be enjoying myself in front of them. Like it's, it's, interesting it's an interesting environment it's like a work environment essentially like the vivid memories of like being in louisiana and it was going great i was having a great time but i had one of those days of like i just i just need a break from everything right and i like went outside and like sat on like the apartment steps and i was just like calling like anyone in my phones list who i thought might answer just to like say like it didn't i didn't nothing to talk about everything was going great i just like needed to not be in this space for some reason anymore. And I remember like people like walking up and down, leaving their apartment, staring at me like, why is this, what is yeah. going on with this kid? And it's like, oh yeah, I just, I don't know, needed a minute. <laughs> and then you feel worse if like people around you or on the tour package, like sense that you're feeling a type of way yeah. because yeah. it's like, I'm not trying to kill the vibe. Like I'm yeah. just sad. Yeah. Like <laughs> it has nothing. I'm having a great time. I yeah. promise. Yeah. Like <laughs> It does. And of course, over the course of a, a month, how long are you out? Is it a couple of weeks? I think it was uh, two or three weeks. 
it was a long time. It felt like it. Yeah. I think it was almost three weeks. Yeah. Maybe. So in the course of three weeks when you're getting four hours of sleep a night and yeah. there's a party involved and there's shows and some shows go great and some shows are going to have a bummer in some capacity, whether yeah. it's turnout or a uh, venue staff person was just the worst person ever to be around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Those nights happen and definitely they all happen to different people at different times and mm-hmm. trying to coordinate all that and be a peacekeeper, I think is weird. And I think as a, uh, as a content person, uh, in my experience, you're in a weird position sometimes like being in the middle because I'm not on the team. I'm not the one, I'm not the sound person who can make a mistake here. I'm not the lighting guy who's going to make a mistake here. Like I'm kind of indifferent to all these parties yeah. and all these people come to you and they're like, you'll never guess what that person's doing. Yes. And it's like, I can't believe it. They're crazy. <laughs> and then that person comes to you complaining and you're like, they're also crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Um, so there's a weird like in between like personal personal yeah. thing where you're managing people and just trying to be there as best you can for everyone because everyone needs each other. And I think we all on the road understand that we're all uh, short fused in some capacity. We're all yeah, operating with a, a shorter deck of cards than usual um, where it's just, yeah, it's a tough place to keep, keep things together. Pretty well summed up, I would say. Look at that. <laughs> Look at me go. Um, I wanted to go. So changing gears a little bit here, but last time we were here, we talked more about like how we met and some of the IC stars shows and the good old days of photo passes. Uh, what I wanted to know is, um, so for anyone listening, Raquel and I met shooting concerts, uh, seven, eight years ago, six yeah. years ago now. It's I don't know. A long time. More than one year and less than 20 years, let's yeah. say <laughs> somewhere in that range. Um, but we met and we were shooting concerts and, uh, we, I think, I hope I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I think we were both kind of like outsiders to the world. We were both yeah. looking at this thing of like, we really like this music, we're interested in it, we have this camera that we are now gaining interest in, but <laughs> this world seems impossible. Um, what are you laughing at? I'm scared. <laughs> what did I do? When your flash exploded. <laughs> oh, goodness. How, I feel like... That was crazy. There was like, it looked like a vintage Polaroid setup where it does the like... Yep. <laughs> So for <laughs> I totally forgot about that. That's I love doing these episodes. They're so much fun. I look forward to them whenever I get one scheduled. And one of the reasons is these memories that come up out of nowhere that I had totally butchered. Uh so what Raquel's talking about is I had a external flash and a flash if someone had no idea what it is, how would you describe it to them? It's Just like, like a attachable flash. Yeah, it's like the size of a of a white claw can you yeah. ever take. Um and so in that compartment it has a flash on top so it shoots out light from your camera to help add photos and in that compartment you put batteries you mine were double a batteries at the time mm-hmm. i don't know what happened <laughs> but something went horribly wrong <laughs> and so i'm on stage i'm helping half-hearted load out i'm pretty sure yeah. i'm almost positive it was half-hearted and my flash was like on top of someone's cab i think on top of like the yeah top of their cab because <laughs> i'd taken it off while i was shooting and put it down thinking nothing of it whatever and then as, like, I don't know if we're loading it. I don't remember what, when exactly it happens. But at some point, like, this whole unit just pops open and explodes. And the batteries go everywhere. And this, like, gray ooze starts foaming <laughs> out of it. And there's, like, smoke. And it was just, yeah, it literally exploded out of nowhere. And still no idea what happened or why it happened. And Super I'm, dramatic. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful you do remember it, though. Because it was one of those, like... <laughs> I was, yeah, I still don't know what happened. At that point, like, whatever, six months into shooting, I definitely didn't know what happened. I assumed I had ruined something and broken something. Um, But anyway, so how did you go from that person who is trying to figure out how Flash blew up uh, to now kind of integrate into the scene where you are touring, you are making friends, you do have, uh, yeah, just more ties into the scene? What is that process like of kind of finding your way into this world that's so foreign? Um... Well, back in those days, I would shoot shows and then speed home and edit the pictures and want to be, like, posting them ASAP, like, uh. didn't ever take the chance to talk to anyone, like, um, rookie mistake number one. Mm -hmm. I took the time, I started, like, you know, adding these people on social media and engaging with them more and building, like, a repertoire. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, where when they came through, they actually knew who I was. I wasn't just a name on a photo pass or Mm. on a guest list. Um, They were familiar with me and I would shoot and I would shoot all the time. 
like nonstop every you were there every weekend it was like some type of show something and we'd be like oh every weekend like you do this 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 yeah um and it got to the point where you know i finally felt comfortable charging and then it went from there just a lot of shooting and making connections and on the topic of making connections when you're finding your way in my device was business cards. And today I kind of laugh and look back at myself of, uh, I think I annoyed a lot of people with this. And so what I would do at shows um, is bring a big stack of business cards, hundreds of business cards. And my goal was to leave the show empty handed. I was not going to bring any of these things home. I was going to find every single person, put one of these in their hand. And that was, I didn't know anyone. I had no way to make a connection. And that was my, my tool to meet people. Mm -hmm. And definitely I probably annoyed some people. And yeah, stepped on some toes but i think what i did well there was learn to advocate for myself and sell myself and just have the confidence going up to someone what is your version of handing out hundreds of business cards how are you start like yeah how did you make these connections that you're talking about or what is a, a strategy uh-huh. it was just kind of organic you bump elbows with them and start talking or was there something I you kind of did actively i just was like hi <laughs> yeah. i'm very like uh i don't know i'll talk to anyone yeah so that's a gift. That's an important part of this is that it is a people uh, job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. I would go up to people and try to introduce myself and mm-hmm. um, not necessarily, I wouldn't try to make a good impression, but I'd be like, Hey, I took these pictures of you. Mm-hmm. Are you cool if I like send them? And then conversation would start from there and then it would just be chill. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it would, these are just normal people who, um, I honestly often find more often than not bands like people who don't really know them. Interesting. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I think that makes sense. I hadn't thought of it, but yeah. Yeah, it's so... I think on the bigger scale, the, the celebrity version of it makes sense where it's like you don't want people who love the movie you're in. You just want a buddy from high school who knows you for you. Yes. And to some degree, there's a, a yeah. smaller version of it there. Of like you don't want your photographer to be the biggest fan of your band you want them to be someone who's professional and going to be on top of stuff and not uh not screaming every time you play the song you want them prepared for what's going to happen in the song and doing the thing um so yeah i think it's definitely an interesting point of like we think definitely being friends with someone is, a, is an asset but yeah there is a value to an outsider as well yeah a hundred percent because it's also non-biased more often than not people will step off the stage and be like how did i sound and i'm like honestly mm-hmm. <laughs> I see. I don't know any of that. I always feel so like bad where all I can, it was great. Like I, I feel like I have nothing. And like, if I, if something happens where I would say it went poorly, it went so badly that they don't ask me. <laughs> like I, I don't get asked in that scenario. So the only time I get asked is like when they're genuinely not sure. And I have nothing to offer that. I feel bad sometimes of like, I, I wish I could offer you more, but like, it sounded like music. It sounded cool. Um, do you feel confident giving people feedback do you feel like you're the the outsider talking to the expert like how do you handle that um i feel like i pay attention to the set enough to know if it doesn't sound right yeah i can't sit there and say like hey man like i know music theory and your snare was sounding a little shitty yeah you know <laughs> like, definitely yeah <laughs> so it's yeah. important to stay in your lane to some degree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a very wise <laughs> statement. Yeah. I, I would like the most that I could ever say is if someone's asking me for their my genuine, honest opinion and I felt like, you know, when you were playing that part in the song, you were definitely off mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's fair and that's valuable feedback that I think that someone would actually take and pay attention to. Yeah. Versus like lying to someone and just being like, oh no, awesome set. Hire me again, please. Definitely. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I th- I think I've gotten that before of like they yeah, people appreciate honesty more so than just like don't try and please me just because you think it's gonna be yeah. happy. Like be honest with me. And especially in the context of tour where you're with them and you're kind of the expert in a sense of you've watched them more than yes. anyone else. Like they haven't even watched them that much. They have been on the stage and involved in it and that kind of skews of perspective sometimes and in some weird way you become the expert there and yeah, you have a valuable insight as such. Yes, a hundred and fifty percent. You're always the expert, though. No, just, no. Just as you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was curious about how you got into the band world. Are there any other challenges that kind of stand out from that time as you're transitioning from buying your camera to trying to establish yourself and figure out some way in? 
Um, I would say the biggest thing for me was that I gave a lot of time and effort um, with the idea that it was going to pay off in certain regards. Yeah. I would bust my ass for, you know, certain projects or people or yeah. whatever it was, yeah. thinking like, hey, like, this is going to be it for me. I'm going to, like, grow up with them, and I would do everything mm -hmm. for free with the assumption when, that it would pay whatever off. Whatever that first opportunity you get, it feels like they are gods. They yes. are going to take off. Yeah. And I it would be dumb to not do everything I can to yeah. facilitate that process. Uh, and I think it's it's important to still approach projects with that energy. I yeah, still think that every, every music video I film is going to be a number one hit. But I also can go to sleep at night okay if that's not the case. And I think there's a really strange yes. thing early on where like you are tied to that and you haven't been around bands long enough to understand that things don't always work out yeah. overnight or sometimes they don't work out at all. And that's part of the process that everyone's aware of. But yeah, when you are first given that golden ticket, it feels like, it, yeah, you yeah. are willing to break your back and do anything you got to do to make them happy or try to yeah. you know, fill that content role. To try to just like... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I definitely came a long way because I, like, I understand working with the bands, like, you're not supposed to go into it with the concept of, like, this is going to pay off for me. Like, mm -hmm. I genuinely value anyone who gives me their money Absolutely. and trusts me and says, hey, I want you to make this something that I can look back and remember. Absolutely. Like, that's... um I mean, it, it's like a wedding for me. Like, mm -hmm. it's important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's it's a concert wedding. But, yeah. like, uh, you know, you just have to make sure that you're not giving yourself and spreading yourself thin on yeah. things that aren't productive and high mm -hmm. yielding. Like, I would spread myself so thin on something that I thought was going to work when I had my home base team who religiously is giving me money and putting money into my pocket and trusting me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's... You just have to make sure that you're investing your time and your shutter count where it's worth it for you. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that other people and other bands aren't worth it, but there are things that aren't worth it. Like, let's yeah. be real. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a point where every opportunity and every chance of an opportunity is worth pursuing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's worth sending an email to every promoter of every concert that is coming through this area. At a certain point, it's like, I don't think I want to send out 100 emails today. Maybe let's go to 50 emails today. Right. And yeah, yeah of course, as that process grows and expands, it's like, uh, maybe this isn't quite the, the fit for me. And yeah, I think that's a, a wise thing that I'm still learning. I'm, I think I'm still bad at it. I've still learned to step away from things that I, I recognize aren't a good fit. I think I still want to please and want to want to do a good job yeah i think i've <laughs> i've joked before that i'm kind of like a puppy in work oh sometimes God. where it's like i just want to make you happy i'm happy to do the extra mile i'm gonna go run and say fetch if you say fetch but like that's valuable to a degree but like yeah also i can't play fetch for everyone <laughs> and i shouldn't be a puppy for everyone um, or for anyone probably for that matter but that's neither here nor there um but yeah it's definitely hard to figure out how to balance yeah how much you offer people and it is your time and your life that you are you are offering, um, and there's a there's a cost to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely a thing. Like, just don't ever put all of your eggs in one basket. Like, it's Especially such when a, eggs cost as much as they do right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, they're like the lobster of like like eggs. I yeah. mean, there's more than one type. No, of you're egg. good. You're yeah, good. there's you're like good. quail eggs. Yeah. Okay. You know. Try and dig yourself out. No worries. There is another type. There's like... There's more than one thing that lays eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to be so happy about it. You're going to text me like, Peter, I can't believe you did that. And I'm going to be like, RTP photography. I'm sorry. I did that. But I do stand by it. We're over 40 minutes in. So anyone who made it this far, like, they can they can be in on that with us. That's fine. Um, uh, looking ahead, what is coming up for you? What do you have to look forward to? What are you working on? What is still interesting to you with the camera? So I have a couple of things confirmed. Um, I don't ever like to say what it is until like I'm actually there. Of course. Because sometimes things fall through. I've been that person to like Don't be count like, your eggs before they hatch. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been like, yeah, I'm going to be here. Like, of course. Uh, and then it doesn't work. That's another big thing's coming soon. Yeah. I mean, that's a 
classic trope that yes. bands are always saying big things coming soon and i think that's another good lesson that we both learned early on is like uh, yeah they're just not keep it to yourself they'll, they'll like... be here when they get here but until then <laughs> keep your mouth shut yeah um i have yeah i have a couple things uh out of state for sure um maybe a festival interesting or two interesting. and yeah i think i'm probably i say this every year but i think i'm gonna try to force myself to do it i would like to go into videography like i've done it before Mm -hmm. you personally know Mm -hmm. i can do video it's just such a tedious task versus editing like when i'm doing editing i can take a picture and before i even take it i'm like i know how i'm gonna edit this this is this is how this is gonna look but when it comes to video i'm like nah I just like sat up. I did like the gamer equivalent of like leaning forward <laughs> in my chair and like getting all ready. We've we've had this agree- disagreement before, and like I think that editing a video is. I agree, it's tedious, but to me, the photo editing process is so much more tedious. And in a video, I love diving into all those details. And in my brain, I feel like each detail matters in the big picture of it. I'm editing a photo. I I feel like. Like every time I start editing a new photo, I'm like resetting that process and starting from square one again, which isn't quite true. Um, but that somehow the photo editing process feels so much more tedious. No. Tell me why I'm wrong. Okay, I'll tell you why in one word Premiere. It's a great program. <laughs> I, everyone hates it. And I am like, <laughs> you'd think they pay me at this point. Like, I love Premiere. I think it's like, great. I looked into Da Vinci and I said, nah, I'm good. Um, there's like three people who understand what that means, but yeah, it's absurd. Premiere is great. No, I have personal problems. Like I think <laughs> it's sh- <laughs> personal problems with Premiere. I just think that it shouldn't be that hard to like. Premiere is the video editing program, by the way. For anyone yeah, listening. yeah. But- it shouldn't be so hard to just get a video in there and edit it the way that I like it. Why can't they have a panel like Lightroom? What's the What's the issue there? They do. It's not the same. It is. It's very similar. No, I've looked into it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to convince you right now. I don't know. <laughs> it's not that. It's not similar enough, basically. Like, and I've run into so many issues, and the mm-hmm. whole proxy situation makes yeah. me want to like proxies we talk unalive yeah. myself. Thank it's- you. <laughs> Thank you for being cautious about the monetization, <laughs> the, the, the subject matter we can discuss later. But whatever, at least you're kind. <laughs> It's just, it's too tedious. And also, it's it takes forever. And my my MacBook sounds like, yeah, it sounds like probably what Skrillex would have if he tried to play a sold out, like, 9,000 cap venue on my MacBook <laughs> with all of its systems. <laughs> that was exactly what I was thinking sounded like, actually. When I hear a MacBook, I think of... Skrillex playing a 9,000 count venue <laughs> on it. That's pretty similar to the sound. Um, no, I think you're crazy. I I look at Premiere and all that as like like sculpting almost. So like in the in like the ancient Greeks with the statues no. that we're talking about, like they would just get like a big piece of rock. And to me, that's all the video footage I start with. And I just sit there with my little chisel and I chisel, 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 chisel. And then next thing you know, from this slab of rock emerges a person that looks real. And that is how Premiere is in my brain. Of like, I start, I just throw all this crap in there, and then I slowly cut away bad stuff and bad stuff. And then what I'm left with is the thing that I'm proud of. Look me in the eyes and tell me you're serious. I'm so serious. <laughs> I think you're crazy. I think like there's a reason I've been doing video. Like yeah, there's a reason I spent more no, time doing that. No, I just it it takes me probably like three minutes to edit a photo. Yeah. To do a music video or to do a video? I spent 80 hours this week on a 4 minute and 19 second video. See, I, yeah, that's that's a lot. I don't know how that works out, how many hours to minutes that is, but it's not ideal. I know that much. It's definitely not the it's, same. Yeah, no. But I don't know. I, yeah, I really enjoy that, like, sculpting process. And I'm glad that someone else enjoys the other side of it because we need people who take photos as well as you do. <laughs> Well, I'm going to try video. I'm yeah. going to give it another go this year. I did. And 
I dare me. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Double dog. Dare me twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I hope you do. I think it's, I think it's fun. I think one of the great parts about this is like once we've taught ourselves photo, like teaching yourself something else is much more manageable in a lot of ways. And it's still scary. Premiere still stinks in your eyes. And I, I think you're wrong and I'll do my best to convince you of that over the coming, coming years. Uh, but I don't know. I think it's fun that like once you've taught yourself something, there is this idea of like, yeah, I could learn video if I want to or whatever the other thing is you would want to learn. Yeah. I just, I mean, I got the Sony to learn video, mm -hmm. so I yeah, guess it's, I... Yeah, it's great for photo, too. It, it No, it is. I love the Sony, but that's where I have not let go of my Canon, because I, as much as I love Sony, the colors on a Canon are unbeatable, and everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. You, you would be the one to know. I'm I've never voice. used a Canon. So yeah. people say that, but I don't know anything. I don't know. It's fine. I, I tend to believe that there's so many other factors that go into it that the color science from each manufacturer is like, it's so low on my list of things of like, is everyone going to be here on time? That, like, that's not a matter of something. <laughs> like, it, will the van show up? It's question number one. doesn't matter. what. I don't know. There, there's so many things that have to go well that I... I tend to overlook color science, um, but I think, yeah, I don't know. I think it's fun how we're all like interested in different parts of photos and cameras and whatever. And yeah, colors aren't necessarily my, my first area of interest, but it is one for you. Yeah. It's like top 10. <laughs> yeah. Top 10 interests in, in the world are how things look color wise. I like colors a lot. Is a good photo bright and colorful? Like what are traits of a good photo to you? Right. To me, a good photo is the number one thing on my list. And is, let's say a concert setting also. So okay, whatever, concert yeah. setting, right. How does the person's face look? Number one. Mm -hmm. Like that's my number one thing is like, do they look derpy? Because if you have not, like if you have not secured the non-derp face, to me, I just can't. Like It's huge. It's very important because honestly, when I see a picture of myself on the internet, I don't care if I could be, I could be in a million dollar outfit. Yep. If my face looks stupid, yep. I'm not, I'm it's not real. rocking with it. Absolutely. Like, it's real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I see my face over your right shoulder and it's driving me insane right now. Um, and then composition. I, uh, the facing is interesting from my, my psychology uh, background is like we do look at faces first and it's yeah. interesting like we go there um so that's important so face is one composition is two yes what is a well composed photo in your eyes um a lot of times in metal shout out metal vocalists um they really love to like do the like big arms big, arm, like expressive extend. body positions it's like a lean back with the mic like it's very cinematic okay um but if I can't see the person's face or if it looks like their head is gone or if um, – I don't know. Like I'm sure I'm guilty of all of these things. These are things that I've learned along the way. Yeah. So I'm not saying – like this is just my personal There's opinion. There's also time to break the rules. So whatever. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I mean it, if, if it's just composed super terribly, like – the person's just in an uncomfortable, weird position. I can't see what's happening. You flash them in the face and they look surprised. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that can go wrong in a photo. Yeah. Um, you could give somebody like an extra nine set of chins just if you want to be in that position. Yeah. So that's that's super – how you take the photo and angle it is super important. I think me. on the other composition thing that I've been obsessed with lately is depth. So trying to have something in the foreground that is somewhat blurry to kind of place us in the environment, us yeah. our subject in the middle so that we're looking at them. And then the background is a little bit more obvious than the foreground. Um, but yeah, it's what's in the background. And again, can we, uh, my biggest gripe often with photos is like when we're taking photos of people, it's so easy to like put people against the wall. And it's mm. like, no, no, have people as far off the wall as you can have them. Uh, get that wall, get that wall blurry. But uh, good photos are faces. They're well composed. Is there anything else? What is a what is the third one? Wrap it up for us. What is the third criteria of a good photo in your eyes? Um, I will say it makes me cry a little bit inside when 
there'll be an insane light display, like mm-hmm. a crazy light display. And it's just a dead on photo. Uh, and there's nothing like sick happening. Like there's yeah. a way that you can take a beam of light and angle your camera and put it behind and front around, sure. like make it look like something great. Make mm-hmm. that LD go home and be like, wow, these are the, uh, this is my job, honey. Like, this is what I do. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's. There is that X factor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's just... what you talk about, your eye. That's, yeah. I, I hate when people say like, oh, you have a good eye. It's like, no, I just practice a lot. I took a lot of stuff and like I <laughs> laid on the ground to take a lot of photos and reached above my head and somewhere it worked yeah. out. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of what you're, kind of what you're getting at is like, just find a creative way to approach this, approach this thing so that it, it is engaging to people who see it. Do weird things. Um, fire. Yeah. Well, how are we doing? We're at 54 minutes. So that's like 51 because there's definitely a couple minutes in the beginning that I'm going to slice off of here. But <laughs> I am tempted to chat for a few more minutes. Um, before I let you go from here, what are – so we said goals are learning videos. Yes. Uh, is there an ideal tour? Is there an ideal – is there anything else you got your eyes set on creatively? Um – Probably after we wrap this up, I'm going to make sure that I can shoot North Lane and Kingdom of Giants. Kingdom of Giants is shows great. Coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Just local shows. I haven't, I went through a pretty dry spell where I didn't feel motivated after tour for a really long time to mm-hmm. edit. I would take pictures and just not edit, but now I'm feeling like I want to be out there taking pictures again. So I'm trying to make sure I'm at all the shows that come through. Mm-hmm. Trying to get back out there. Yeah. Um, well, I was hoping to try and squeeze to an hour, and my brain is freezing and tired, and I'm ready to chat off air because yeah. that sounds fun. And food. Um, food also sounds great. Um, but before I let you go from here, thank you for coming through. I appreciate it. Where can people find you online? What should they look out for? Is there anything people should know about you? Um, you can find me on Instagram <laughs> at... Raquel Tavares photography <laughs> oh, and to look out for uh I don't know hopefully I can get some pictures of the Milky Way and some good band photos out for you guys at some point I would love to give post... me a new phone wallpaper <laughs> yeah yeah that's been a minute since I did a wallpaper drop yeah yeah something to look forward to something for the people yeah well, maybe color correction presets who knows Anything's possible. Thanks for coming out. Bye.